Thank you so much for tuning into Journey with Christian D. Evans podcast. My name is Christian D. Evans, your host. And guys, we have someone very, very special on because, guys, I want to share with you, there's a lot of things going on, right? And it's very interesting. If you start thinking about all the biggest companies, right, they're brands, right? And in fact, a lot of them are so, so like Kleenex, right? Such massive brands that, hey, can you pass a Kleenex? It is so ingrained to us. Mm. Nike, uh, Adidas, all of them, right? Now, this guy is a brand expert. He spent the last 25 years of corporate and agency experience in the marketing and advertising industries. This man works with SMBs to build and grow competitive strategic brands. After spending decades uncovering the secrets to big brand successes, he is now leveling the playing field and opening doors for small business owners just like yourself by sharing best practices insights gained from helping brands maintain a competitive edge in their market grow their brands and reach new audiences this magic brings this man to the table is found in the intersection of creative thinking brand strategy data-driven marketing and digital e-commerce and so much more that we're going to dive in in this podcast ladies and gentlemen please welcome my guest sean atkinson how are you doing my man i'm doing great thank you so much for having me on i'm excited to be able to have this conversation and uh, spread the wealth a bit yeah, definitely, man. And I'm really excited because, I'm, of course, you have such a massive experience going from 25 mm -hmm. years. But let's talk a little bit about that journey. You know, we, we were just talking about how, you know, you were always an entrepreneur, how always had that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where did that come from? And, and let's talk a little bit about that. And obviously your journey to, to how you're impacting so many small business owners now. Sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm the son of a pragmatic mother with really strong work ethic and a father that had the entrepreneurial spirit and creativity. So, I come by it honestly, and the result of that is uh, is an entrepreneur and someone that's more mogul minded. I don't want to have a business. I want to have multiple streams coming in so that I always have something. And I know I've been around long enough to know that things shift, things evolve. So you want to be able to put yourself in a position where you're able to pivot. And one of the things that we'll probably be able to get into is agile marketing and how to be able to navigate so that you don't just build something that's static, but you build something that you can continue to be able to maneuver with how the industry and how things are evolving. So uh, excited to be here. Uh, I look forward to, uh, to the conversation and about me. Yeah, I just, I love strategy. I love the process and systems and the better you understand it the more you know where you can fit in now at what point in your 25 year career did you realize the importance of brands right i think many mm -hmm. of us we we're not like really you know really see until we see right and so mm -hmm. what did that what did that look like and obviously your love for okay this strategy and strategic you know concepts and data driven like okay what what gets the what, what moves the money needle further right yes yes uh that's a great question i would say it goes back to pretty much the beginning uh i remember wanting to get my first car and my father was like well here's what you do you got to work so i got a job doing uh marketing and i worked in the mall i was that guy that would annoy you and say listen do you have time for a survey and i learned marketing that way and i learned why brands ask the questions that they ask and who they're looking for as an audience and I also learned it's not just what you ask, it's how you ask it to be able to elicit a specific response that's gonna be able to help you move that needle. So uh, that was the start of me really being able to take a look at, it's not just understanding that you need to create a great product, it's also how you frame it, and it's also understanding the audience. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. So because of that situation as being you know a bothersome individual in, in, in the mall, right? You learn certain skills, Mm -hmm. What did you mean in regarding not it's not about what you say, it's how you say it? Explain that. Yes. Uh, well, there's there's a there's a saying that says, don't try to uh, don't try to speak to the service or the product that you created. Speak to the problem that you're solving. So when you can frame it that way, you're not making it about you. You're making it about that person. So I knew from doing a survey, OK, I've struck out a few different times. I need to change the way that I'm approaching it. I need to understand the people that I'm trying to, to, to have these conversations with. And I know what questions that will get canceled out. Um, so when you're, when you're doing the filtering and you're asking these questions, you want to be able to understand, how do I get the answer that they may not know that they know? And that's where you start to figure out, OK, so it's not just the questions that are on the board. It's reading the person that you're having a conversation with and making those adjustments. And that's where being agile comes into play. Yeah. So what I find so interesting with what you're saying is that the, the biggest key behind this is understanding your customer inside and out so much so that 
you know them more than they know you, right? And, and right. I mean, they, they, they know them, them themselves, really. And, you know, how can individuals, now that there's so much data available, right? Not mm. as much as Google and Facebook have, but we have a lot of data at our fingertips. How do we leverage that mm-hmm. to be able to obviously drive that, th- those marketing messages that resonate so, so incredible? That's a great question. I, I say it starts with building the proper foundation. Uh, what I find is there are so many businesses that are in a rush to get to market that they skip steps that they end up paying to learn on the back end. And that's yeah. where so many businesses fail within that first three to five years. And then there's also the businesses that make it past that point, but ne- they never actually grow to the point of being competitors. And as someone that spent 25 years helping businesses that are on top stay on top, I know what I'm looking at to be able to say, uh, this is what you may be missing, but let me actually listen to what you're doing so I can actually identify the problem. Uh, I find that some people are so much in a rush to be able to tell someone what they need rather than to listen for what they need. So if you listen for what they need, then you're in a position to actually be able to provide them with something that's going to move the needle for them. So that's where I, I operate a little bit differently. I know best practices and I know insights. But what I like to do is I like to customize my results to the individual. So then this way, it's not a cookie cutter. It's something that they can do with their budget and their timeline and be able to work through goals that build up their momentum. Well, let's let's talk a little bit. And and first of all, let's first of all, let's go ahead and go into the foundation. Mm -hmm. What are the four? What are some of the pillars that build that foundation to know, Okay, as an entrepreneur, I'm in the foundation and this is where I need to spend, you know, 80, 20, right? 80 percent of my time right here, because in the the, everything else will fall into place. What does that look like? Well, I operate in uh, three, four and five. So there's uh, everything kind of falls within that framework, as at least as far as my experience goes. So there's the problem, the solution and the results. First, you have to identify what the problem is, and then you have to be able to come up with a solution that you can bring to market in a way that will actually resonate with the people that you're trying to to reach out to. But then the most important part is the results, because you need to not only be able to do it once, you need to be able to be consistent with it. And then once you can build up that consistency, then you want to figure out how to be able to automate it. So uh, that's a good starting point as far as the foundation of problem, solution, and results. Those are the three pillars that I always start off with whenever I have a conversation with someone that has a business idea. And then the other part is understanding your why. Um, Your why means more than just to you. Your why means something to the audience that you're trying to reach. In some cases, there are businesses that are starting out, they don't have the experience. They don't have that wealth to be able to dig into, to be able to say, well, this is what makes me different. What makes them different is their why. What makes them different is their character and what they bring to the table. There are more people that are willing to work with someone that doesn't have the experience as long as it's something that they can relate to. And they say, you know what, I'm going to give you a shot because I, I, I feel like there's a bond there. I feel like we clicked. You can build a client base just on that alone without actually having the full level of experience that bigger brands have. Yeah, see, and, and I really appreciate you saying that because, you know, so many times, I meet so many business owners that say, well, you know, the bigger brands, I'm never able to compete against them, blah, blah, blah. And, and what you have to understand is that you look at that in a scarcity mindset. Oh, mm-hmm. they're better than I am. They're bigger, blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong. That, that might be true. Mm-hmm. However, though, there are some benefits that you can bring to the table, which is, of course, you're, you're small, you're agile, and you're quick. And guess what one of the biggest things is? is people hate count, calling into a 1-800 number. They want to talk to you. They want to talk to the owner. They want to, now, of course, you have to scale beyond that at some point. Yes. But I mean, see, you do have attributes that are way better than Amazon, right? Or Billy mm-hmm. Bob or whatever the company is. So let's talk, dive into the problem, solution, results. Let's mm-hmm. dive into that a little bit further. Okay, so we, those are the foundation, problem, solution, results, understanding that. But give us an example of really diving in into identifying what that problem is. Because so many people we think so, oh, well, I know that they they need a drill. No, 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 no. Dive into that a little bit more. Why do they need the drill? Well, because they need to hang a picture in their house because there's there's a hole. Oh, well, why is that? Because their wife has been nagging them forever and ever and ever, right? And then all of a sudden you get three or four levels deep now. And Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, well, the reason why is because I'm just so sick and tired, you know, like all of a sudden now that's that's the powerful why. Why do you really truly want a drill? The drill is because, man, you know, whatever it may be. So let's talk a little bit about that. 
Okay. Um, well, that goes back to the five, four, three for me. I start off with the five W's and then get into the H's. So who, what, where, when, and how. Um, when you can figure out what brought this to you, like, where did you get the idea from? Was it from a good experience that you want to share? Was it a bad experience that you want people to overcome? Or was it a opportunity that you saw that you could benefit from? Those are three different whys that once you can identify those, then you can start to look forward into, now how do I, be, how do I create a messaging that allows me to be able to relate with the people that I'm trying to reach? If you're in it for the money and you're in it for the opportunity of, well, I saw an opportunity, so I'm taking advantage of it, then your story isn't necessarily going to be as deep, but it doesn't mean that you can't sell. It just means that you need to understand that you're going to have more of a conversation with the person as opposed to talking about your brand journey. So you're not talking about your brand journey, you're talking about the customer journey more. So that's a subtle difference, but it's one where I highlight that when I know it's someone that said, well, I saw an opportunity, there was a need there, but um, I didn't have a lot of history behind it. As opposed to someone that does have the history behind it, they can not only answer question one, two, and three, they can get to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. They've been, they've been through it, they've experienced it. They, that's where you can really sell the journey and, and what got them to the, to the point where they felt like this was a really great experience that I had. Um, I knew that it was something that I felt like I needed to be able to share. That's a whole different set of marketing. There's the people that had bad experiences and they wanted to figure out how to be able to make it so that other people don't have that issue. That's a whole other set of messaging. And when you can think through those and you can break it down into those groups, whichever one of those groups that you go into, then you can kind of spread out from there and start to speak to your messaging and break it down into how things work for you. So the three pillars, problem, solution, results, that's a starting point. But then what brought you to the idea of this is a problem? And then, okay, well now how do you explain the solution? Well. I got the idea because I've been through this before. I got the idea because I had a bad experience and I wanted to figure out how to be able to get around that. Or I got the idea that I heard so many people complain about it that I felt like there has to be an opportunity. Let me figure out how a way that I can monetize that. And there's no shame in that. Yeah, definitely. And then find the need to fill the need. That's really what it comes down to in business. And so, you know, let's talk a little bit about you because I really appreciate you diving, dialing that in mm -hmm. because I really want to emphasize, guys, you know, like one of the things I always tell people is that all this data, people are in all these forums on Amazon, on Walmart, and, you know, Dick's, you know, customer on YouTube and everywhere, right? Everywhere there are people talking and reviewing stuff all yeah. the time. And it just takes a little bit of your time and energy on Reddit, right? Go mm -hmm. do a keyword research, boom. There's a whole bunch of people that are complaining, that are talking, that are discussing their pain, their problem, their difficulty. So if you want to be in the mind of your customer, well, shoot, there's a whole bunch of free data. You just have to do a little bit of sweat equity, a little bit of work on the front end, exactly. right? Uh, and really dialing that in. Now, also, let's talk about the solution, right? Mm -hmm. So what I like what you were talking about is you get niche specific, right? So many people, when I talk to some, you know, this is kind of a beginner kind of mindset. I like to talk a little bit of intermediate. This is how you get into the intermediate stuff. So niche specific, why is that so important? And, and let's let's kind of give an example of why, hey, if you talk to the wrong audience, you may have a good product, like a 10 kind of, you know, scale 10 kind of product, but you're talking to the wrong audience, they're never going to sell. And then let's, let's talk about why that's so important, getting niche specific and identifying that. Sure. Um, it's, you want to be specific because there's nothing worse than that obnoxious person that walks into a room and says hello to everybody without saying hello to one individual person in, in the process. And if you just break it down to that, um, it's like walking into a room and yelling out your number to every woman in the room and just waiting to see which one writes it down. Like you can't do that and expect to get good results. Uh, it's the same with advertising. It's the pay to spray. You're spreading it out and you're sending it to every single person. And then you're using that to try to figure out how do I, how do I get the data from that to be able to reach the proper audience? If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. And that's going to come across. Um, I, I, I have a joke and it's one of the ways that I explain it when I say like you want to niche down. Um, it's like being that guy that stands at a bar in a club and you talk to every single woman that comes to that to that bar. Every other woman have seen you do that. So by the time you get to the sixth, seventh, faith one, they're just like, you know what? You're, there's nothing special about me. You're just doing it until you can figure out what's going to work. So um, niching down or niching down is the process of saying, I'm talking specifically to you. 
And that's where you can move a customer from the no like trust. And no is first getting them to know about you, what your offering is, what your services are. Uh, the like is where they start to resonate and they start to say, you know what, I like, I feel like we're clicking. You're saying some things that actually um, makes me nod my head and we're connecting on that level. And then you get to the point where you're having trust. So when you're talking about that intermediate level, that's more the like. Uh, the no is you get your brand out there, it's brand awareness. Sure, you can put something out where you get the impressions, but you're not really going to get the results from that. Like there's not a lot of data that you can pull from that, that you're going to be able to extrapolate and then run that next campaign to take that leap. The intermediate is where you start to be able to gather that information where you can do something with it. And that's where you can start to say, well, I tested it out. And I, I, I had, uh, let's, let's take it back to uh, the, the three different types of, of experiences, good experience, bad experience, and I saw an opportunity. Um, from a good experience, you can have that conversation and you can say, well, you know, this is my experience. Have you had it? And there'll be some people that say, no, I did, I've never had that, but I would love to have it. And that's a whole group right there that you can have a conversation with. And then there are the people that have had it. And uh, I don't know, have you ever had something where um, you got it once and you wish you bought another one of it? I have, when I, I'm a t-shirt guy, so I'll get a t-shirt, I buy two because I know, damn it, something's gonna happen to that first one. But I have another one in the closet that I can pull back out. So it's got shelf life for me. So um, I, I'm, I'm someone that thinks ahead when it comes to that, but that's where that intermediate part comes in. You wanna be able to think these things through and have a conversation with a specific person and that's where personas and things come in because you take that one person and then you create a hundred other people based around that. And that's where you really start to get your data and where you can start to make moves. And I, and I can just hear my audience going, but Sean, you know, my product is for everybody, right? Mm. And, and, and they look at scarcity and say, well, I'll never be able to make $7 million or, you know, seven figures in that if I niche down too specific. Mm. When they say that, what do you say, man? I say that... The people that care the most are willing to pay more. So are you built, are you selling for volume or are you selling for quality? Because if you're selling quality, those people are going to be willing to pay more than the people that are willing to say, well, there's 10 other options out there. Give me a reason what makes you different. The level of time that you put into speaking to that many people, um, it lengthens the sales process as opposed to when you're having more of a personal conversation and personalization is a really big thing with with marketing right now uh, because people have had more time and they've educated themselves more to the point where they know when you're doing that pay to spray. They know when you're just having a general conversation and you're not having it with them and they keep scrolling. But if you have more of a personal conversation with them, you shorten the customer journey. You get from that no like trust. They're, they're looking at you and saying, okay, I like the fact that you're talking to me. That makes me feel like I trust you more. And you move them further through that journey and you get them closer to the point where you can actually convert. The level of time that you put into your sales process is where you make or break your business. If you have a long sales process, then you need to have as many people in that process as possible. If you have a shorter process, then you can afford to tweak it in ways that allow you to be able to do something else. But uh, by trying to have conversations uh, with multiple people, it's hard to keep track of which one you were resonating with and why. But if you narrow it down and you lock in that one, then you can afford to say, okay, I figured that one out. Now I can start having the conversation with this group and with this group and with this group. And by the time you're done, you've got a plan for each one of these sets of people that you want to be able to work with. And that's how you really build out your audience. You're exactly right. And what I find so interesting about that is because, you know, I see, I hear so many people that, oh, I don't want to niche down. I don't want to get too niche. And the thing is, is if you do not go niche and get mm. real specific, first of all, you can run a seven figure business just getting like in that small niche market. I truly believe that. I know that. And you really don't. I mean, and, and a lot of people are perfectly fine with a seven figure business, you know, 10 million, 50 million, 100 million. That's cool. And then also the second thing I also see is that you know, you, you have to understand because if you do not know who you're talking to, I've seen ads that say, hey, moms, well, guess what? I'm not a mom. So guess what? Mm. I do keep scrolling because that ad is not for me. Right. But all of a sudden when they target, hey, entrepreneur, hey, business owner, well, now all of a sudden it's piqued my interest. Why? Mm. Because I am that, that individual. And so the more you're able to talk to them, the more you can obviously resonate and understand those pains. Absolutely. And what I found very interesting, and, and I think you can relate to this, but we'll talk a little bit about brand a little bit bigger mm. as well, but using the same verbiage as, as they say it. 
So if they if they talk about you know I'm uh, you know specific items and specific verbiage the way they say it use that in your advertising because that'll Absolutely. that'll be huge and your brand and any marketing piece because guess what they're like man I don't know why I like this guy so much but man I really like Sean and it's like well, of course you like him because guess what? I'm using the same verbiage and same words and so many of us you you, you think all oh, those small intricate details I want to, I want you to understand that Walmart and these large companies and even Amazon. They've tested all this. You know the reason why they have the color as the color of the, of the button? You know the reason why they have it everywhere that they have? You know, it's like there's everything that they've done is a test to make sure that your sales process is extremely mm -hmm. simple. And now they have your credit card. All you have to do is click on one button and boom. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Two-day shipping. Wonderful, right? There's no reason why. There's a massive reason why. And so I just want to share that with, with our mm -hmm. audience. And let's talk a little bit about, of course, you know, um, you know, we talk about that, and we really appreciate diving into that. But let's talk about at what point should we start really focusing on brand? And, mm -hmm. and okay, now we, we got brand awareness, brand strategy. How do we take our next level? Because if you're just beginning and really about a seven-figure business, you shouldn't really you should be focused on sales and structure. Mm -hmm. And then there should be focusing on brand, brand awareness, strategy and stuff like that on the back end. And, you know, because now you, you look at a lot of these people and now they're, they're scaling. So what does that look like and, and what does that strategy look like for you normally? Uh, I believe in planting the seeds right from the jump. So uh, by that, I mean, you need to consider reputation management. You need to view yourself as a brand right from the start, even if you're just building out a business. So by the time you get to being someone where more people know about you, it puts you in a position where they've already made a decision about you. So your brand at that point is whatever you say that it is. If you decided that, well, one of the things that I'll do is I, I have conversations with people about building a business versus building a brand. When you build a business, they're basing it on that specific product or that specific service. When you're building a brand, you're leaving room for yourself to be able to do as many different things as you want. So you can branch out and look in different directions based on your growth and based on what you've learned during that process. So, uh, for example, there are businesses that may start. And like you said, you get to a certain point where, OK, now I feel more confident. I feel more comfortable in my space. I want to be able to branch out. I've taken the time to do email marketing where I've had conversations and people would say, I'd love it if you had this, I'd love it if you had that. Um, that gives you an opportunity to gather that feedback and make calculated risk rather than just risk. And calculated risks are gonna be the difference between you being successful and how quickly you're able to turn that around as opposed to just putting something out there as a feeler and saying, well, I guess that could work. So that goes back to what you were saying of how do you build out something that, uh, you can have a conversation around and use that conversation to be able to build things out. So when you're using their language, they naturally automatically resonate with you because they're saying, well, that, that sounds like me. Yes, because it is you. And when you think about building out a brand, then you're taking all of that information that you collected and you're able to say, well, this person's having this conversation, but it could also tie into this. It could also tie into this, and it could also tie into this. And that's where you can start looking at how you can be able to expand. And that goes back to um, being that annoying guy in the, in, the, in the mall. That's where they gather that information. You ask the questions and you get the answers, and then you figure out a strategy that allows you to be agile enough to say, we're gonna go in this direction, but we also know that we can go in these other directions at the same time. Yeah, and Sean, you know, whenever someone talks about brand or thinks about brand, you mm -hmm. know, I think a lot of people, they think about it almost like elementary, right? Where, okay, what's the color of it? What's the logo? Okay, cool. What's our core values, right? And mission statement. And those are all, you know, part of it. Mm -hmm. But also, I think there's a, a, a deeper level. When someone thinks of Sean Atkinson, what do you want them to think of? Right. And they're like, oh, he's goofy. He's fun. He's eccentric. He's he's very serious. He's focused. He's energized. He's brand. Like, what, what do you want them to to think of. Mm -hmm. And so how do you do that? And what what does that structure look like when you're just starting out with a new 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 company or a company that's been there for a while and really dialing that in? What does that look like? Uh, great question. I would say that's where you start to ask the, the deeper questions and you want to dig into having that proper understanding of your audience. Um, perception is everything. And uh, before, uh, well, I started in marketing, but one of the things that I, um, I was able to do is, um, I, my mother worked in a record label, so I grew up around um, the industry. And one of the things that I realized was one of the hardest things to market are people, because people talk. Brands don't talk, brands, you know I mean? Like you could put a product out, it is what it is. But 
the perception behind a product is different than the perception behind a person. So when you're talking about a person, then that's where um, that's where PR comes in. That's where reputation management comes in. That's where you have to be more mindful of what it is that you're doing, because that perception is going to drive your business. So if you have people that relate to you and you stick to that script of this is my brand, this is who the, this is how they perceive me, then you will continue to build out that specific audience. If you want to be able to branch out beyond that, and I can use um, music as an example, there are there are artists that come out and they have their their best albums and their favorite songs, and people want them to only sing those songs. But they, as artists, are saying, you know what, I'm more creative than that. So I want to be able to test this out, and I want to be able to test this out, and that's what gets them those different audiences. So your brand is perception, and how you build out your brand is how do you want to be perceived. And if you want to kind of lock yourself in, and I use Dollar Tree as an example, um, they pretty much pick the name, they pick the lane, and now with inflation and everything else going up, um, they're Dollar Tree, but they're not Dollar Tree. They're they're a dollar ninety nine <laughs> tree, and there's different things. So you you want th this is why I say there's a difference between building a business and a brand. When you want to look at that next level, you need to think about being able to pivot. And if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that you need to be able to leave room to be able to pivot. What may be success, successful to start may not be successful five years from now. They may say, you know what, yeah, we got that, but now what else do you have? And you want to be able to leave room for your business to be able to expand with your audience. So the more that you stay in contact with your audience, the more you stay in tune with them, the more you find those needs. So again, that goes back to don't sell your product, sell the problem that you're solving. So if you know that they're having a problem and these are these are this is your audience and they're growing with you, then you're aware of the things that they need and you're starting to look at how can I fill that need and still be able to stay in that perception and that that technically the box that you're putting me in. Yeah, definitely. And I really appreciate you bringing that up because see, uh, and like I said, is, is I think so many times we think about, oh, what are what are our what are our colors, our corporate mm -hmm. colors, what are our this, this, and this, and and it's like so much more in depth into it. And then as well as you know, personal brands, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about personal brands. You know, should you have a corporate brand and then a personal brand, or should you know just like Gary V, you know Gary V more than you know his companies that he's actually working, yes. you know, he, that he owns. And and same thing with like you know Donald Trump, right? When you think of Donald Trump, you either love him or hate him but mm -hmm. he's a brand that comes with him every time you see him he's in a suit right or he's in golfing or whatever right it's the same thing with obama or mm -hmm. or uh you know uh, you know same thing with like uh, uh the guy that owns mavericks i can't think of the guy but all of these people have mark personal cuban, brands mm -hmm. yeah mark cuban yeah personal brands that then all of a sudden you think of specific qualities right and mm -hmm. so what what does that look like in regard hey should we focus so much on personal brand or should we focus on you know business brand or both? What, what does that look like? What's your opinion on that? Uh, I'm of the opinion that I I would play it safe with both um, because let's look at uh, Papa John's. Like that was their front man. And he ran into some issues that people didn't necessarily agree with. And next thing you know, they don't really have that brand the same way because they put so much behind him. That was their front man. So now they're scrambling to try to reset themselves and reframe um, how people perceive them because they use that person as the front person. So the way that I look at it is, again, I go back to the music industry of you can sell that person, but you also need to sell the experience. So the person is, you can relate to that person, you can enjoy that person, but if that person ever does something that throws you off, then you need something to fall back on, as opposed to uh, something where if, if you don't have to worry about anything popping up or anything like that, sure, you can go with just a personal brand. But I believe in having that backup. I want to be able to separate the two because uh, one is based on character and the other is based on results. Yeah, it's a good succession plan. I, I like what you're saying there because, see, I know, uh, you know one, one incidence can, can totally wipe your whole credibility, your trust, your value, whatever. And obviously, you want to separate those two and say, okay, my business can still succeed, mm -hmm. and I'm over here doing these other things. I uh, appreciate you saying that. So let's let's dive in a little bit about, mm -hmm. like, obviously, branding. When you work with a client, what do you, what, you know, obviously, you're saying, okay, got to ask these questions. Identify your avatar, things like that. What What's your... What does that look like on, on like a step-by-step on -step, when you're working with a client? What are those levels as well to make sure? And then as well as, 
you know, what, what's that, what's that implementation strategy to make mm-hmm. sure we're implementing that on a consistent basis? Cause you can try for six months. Oh, I don't like it. I don't know. And then you, you try it another six months. Cause that's how entrepreneurs work. Right. We, we try yeah. something and just constantly, we don't stay consistent with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, what's, what does that look like? Uh, well, uh, it, I, I break it into two different groups. Um, I break it into new businesses, entrepreneurs that are just starting out. And what I start with is a business model evaluation. Um, you've got your idea. Let's look at all the different things that could come up. And then let's make sure that we've covered as many of those as possible so that we can start thinking about what comes next, as opposed to an existing business where I'm doing more of a business assessment. And I'm looking at what do you already have in place? What have you already established? And how can we take what's working and then just tweak the things that are already in place. So it's it's a different process, but uh, it's something where basically what I'm looking at is how did you get to this point? Um, how did it affect you? Uh, how does it tie in with your product and services? How big is your audience? And how does it resonate? And then the resonate is, is it a want, is it a need, or is it a guilty pleasure? Now, those three seem like, okay, well, I mean, some things are want, some things are need, but the guilty pleasure, that's a whole different level of marketing. Like, how do you market something that people don't want to admit that they like? You have to tweak that approach to be able to, to go at it in a way that you can still get, make it accessible, but you don't have to be at the forefront of it. They don't have to volunteer and raise their hand to say, oh yeah, this is me. Uh, I would say an example of that is, um, I remember working at Lucky Magazine and my brother loves TV. So like he'll watch anything good, bad or indifferent. And um, they wanted me to work late. And I was like, you know what? I really can't right now. Um, I have to get home. I promised my brother we would watch a show. And they were like, oh, what show? Like how important is it that you have to do this? And didn't even occur to me to think about it. But I was like, it was Gilmore Girls. And they laughed at me. They were like, you're like six, nine. You're a big, what would possess you to even watch that show? And it's a guilty pleasure. My brother likes the pop culture. I I love my brother. If he wants to sit down and watch it, then we watch it. After getting embarrassed by that, then I realized that's a guilty pleasure. That's not something I'm necessarily going to volunteer information about, but I am going to make sure that I stay in contact with knowing what's going on with those things. So guilty pleasure is going to be something that you market a little bit different than something that's a want or a need. If it's a want, then you're presenting it more along the lines of, well, you want it. Why shouldn't you have it? If it's a need, then the results, the solution, everything is going to be a little bit different because it's it's more mandatory. It's not a question. It's a, are you going to choose me or are you going to choose them? So different approaches, but that's where I look at all of that. And that's how I tie it into the brand. So by the time you go to market, you've already thought through some of these questions. You've got a basic strategy for a few different directions. And that's what allows you to be agile later. I don't want to create something that's static where they're stuck in, but we thought this was going to be what worked. I want to think about questions seven, eight, nine, and 10. So by the time you go to market, you have marketing campaigns where you have a couple of different conversations going, and then you have the ability to take a look at whatever's trending and be able to add that into the mix. Yeah. And that, and that makes, that makes perfect sense. Kind of building that, 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 that whole process and system mm. to make sure that you are optimizing on a consistent basis and actually making that run. And it just becomes just systematic. So let's talk about like, you know, the subconscious aspect, because this is what I always find interesting with marketing. And once you understand your, your client and dialing that in and how the subconscious of the brand can be so ingrained where people, mm. when they think of you and, and, and things like that, how do you, how do you really, really dive into the subconscious in with that client and that brand and that company uh empathy empathy it's something where you can tell when you're having a conversation and you're asking questions what that person perks up about when they when they start to dig into going beyond that one or two uh answers um that that one or two word response when you find that then you then you pull at that thread and you start to pull that information out so that you can dig further into um their why their journey, everything that led up to that point, past, present, and future. Um, It's not just about what led up to this moment. It's what do you want to be able to accomplish now? What are your long-term goals? Somebody may not relate with what your past was, but they may relate with what your present is, or they may relate with where you're trying to go. So uh, there's a joke. I remember being in a barbershop once, and this guy came in, and he was selling movies. And they were like, oh, how much are the movies? And the guy came in, he was polite and everything. And they were like, yeah, no, no, we don't need it. We don't need it. And then the guy left and then another guy came in and he sold the, he was selling the same things for double the price. 
And they were like, oh, you know, this other guy just came in and he was selling this on for, for less. Like you're charging twice as much. And his response was, well, maybe you didn't want it then, but maybe you want it now. <laughs> and I, I like, I thought it was hilarious because I, I was like, you know what, if you, if you have a need, you're going to fill that need when you have it. If it's a want, then, you know, maybe, maybe you want it, maybe you don't want it. When I left the barbershop, I walked outside and I saw both of the guys knew each other. So they had a thing where they were working it, where they walked in and anyone that had that need was going to buy it directly. And then they had the second guy come in for that FOMO of fear of missing out. Well, I let the first guy go. And now here comes, here, here comes somebody else selling it for twice as much. Maybe if I don't get it now, the next guy is going to come and he's going to try to ch uh, try to sell it for three times as much. So there's different marketing approaches to how you want to be able to go about it. But it leads into the better you understand your audience, the better you can market and the better you can put a strategy together around it. So um, these are just little stories that I, I remember and I, I apply them to my concept of when I'm running campaigns and things like that. I will run a general campaign and then I run one that's a little more targeted because I know I need still need to get the results. But then I also want to be able to get that information where I'm learning something. So then this way I can take that and then create something else and then create something else and create something else. And by the time I'm done, I'm really having a conversation where I'm talking to that person. They really feel like, no, you're talking to me. You understand me because I'm gathering that information. I'm getting their words to be able to repeat back to them to say, I didn't, I didn't just, you, you weren't just talking. I was listening. And now that you know that I was listening, give me your advice on what you want me to do next. And that's where you can find new products and services by saying, you know what, I've, I heard you say that you wanted this. Um, now let's figure out how we can be able to craft something that fits your exact needs. And that comes back to corporate experience, um, being a solutions architect where uh, I would go in with the salesperson and salesperson is gonna sell the product. Um, I have to listen for what is what their needs are, what their goals are, and then find the right product for them. And then taking it a step further, being a program manager, if we didn't have that program, if we didn't have that product or service, I need to learn enough about what their goals were and what their needs were to go back to the product team and the tech team and be able to build something out and come back to them and say, now here, this is basically my understanding of what it is that you wanted. Tell us where we can tweak that to be able to build that out. And that's where you can build out your brand. That's where you can really be able to resonate with the customer is empathy, listening to what it is that they're saying, knowing the difference between something that they want versus something that they need. And something that might just be a guilty pleasure where they're indifferent about it. So if you roll it out, you're not necessarily going to get those results. See, so, yeah, you, you bring up so many good points because, you know, what I find so interesting when you're starting a business, right, you always think, oh, I got this product, I want to sell it, right? And it's not the, oh, hey, it's the other way around. Hey, what does my audience want? And then obviously give them what they need, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's the same cause of what you're saying. And what's so what's so interesting is that we're getting so many data points, right? You can you can put on something on Twitter and you get a thousand likes, and then you put something on Twitter another day and you get 200 likes, right? And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you realize, okay, what did I say? Why did this resonate with my audience, right? It's the same concept, same thing with Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, mm -hmm. right? This guy has a 10,000 views on this, and this other one didn't have, you know, a thousand. Why was that? Why did it resonate? Why did it explode? And that's one of the reasons why, you know, you get you get like exponential growth, or organic growth, mm -hmm. which is just like viral, viral content. If you can hit and resonate with what a lot of people are struggling with, that's what I always find interesting and obviously <clears throat> develop that brand. And now, one of the things I want to bring up to you as mm -hmm. well is the, the, the importance of building a brand, right? We talked mm -hmm. about the strategy, we talked about this, we talked, and some people get it and understand it, but also I want people to really, really dive in and understand, okay, why everything should correspond with not just from the colors, but from the mission to the vision to obviously, you know, just the way you present to the customer service. And just like Sean was saying, to the actual experience, like we, we value customers, we value this, we value that. And then all of a sudden you're on the customer, wow, that was amazing you know, or whatever it felt like they, they make them feel like that. And so uh, let's talk about that, why that is so important and it should be ingrained into your business, into your personality, into everything that you do in that, in that regard. Consistency is key. Nobody wants to feel like you sold them something. And then the moment you got their money, then you switched up. So when you have that consistency from start to finish, first time they saw you um, and, and I can give you an example as well. Um, but Consistency, that's the, it's the short, simple answer. And then where you go deeper into it is when someone sees your brand logo, um, if you, once they see it, then that's brand awareness. Then you get to the point where there's brand recognition. Brand recognition is, okay, not only do I know that 
that you exist. Now I recognize it. And it could be the logo. It could be the color. Like you're looking for things that resonate with that person. And it's like you said, someone can get a thousand and someone can get 200 uh, as far as likes. It's because of their consistency. Someone may post something and they say, you know, oh, that was great. I really liked it. And when they go to look back for that information or a continuation of that conversation, if you didn't continue that conversation, then they move on to the next person that is continuing that conversation. So that's where consistency starts to kick in, where you're not just building out your brand, you're having a conversation. And it's almost like the phone war thing where you're on the phone with someone and you're having a great conversation and they say, oh, my, that's my line. Hold on for a second. And then they come back and say, I got to go. Even if you weren't that interested in the conversation, suddenly you feel like you got you, you kind of got kicked to the curb yeah. a little bit. It's it's a similar yeah. thing. You're having a conversation. Brand is important as far as consistency all the way through, because it's, it's that that they recognize. You're going from brand awareness to brand recognition, and it's you're having a conversation through the whole customer journey. So you're going from the no, you're going to the like, you're going to the trust. You're going from, they didn't know anything about this problem, and that's why they Googled it, to now I know a little bit more about the problem, and I can ask better questions, to now that I have a better understanding of what the solution is, now I need to figure out who's going to be the best person to give me that solution. And how do I make sure that I get the results that I need? So this is all part of building out that brand. Your brand needs to be start to finish. It needs to be from not just uh, the first introduction, but it has to continue on past that actual sale. Uh, I have a conversation with my clients and I always explain to them, especially those that do e-commerce. Um, if you sell something and you don't have a thank you note at the end of that purchase, that's not a good experience. If you're not following up with that person to be able to check in, and say, well, you know, how, how, how is it going? At this point, you, you probably washed that a couple of times. Is it still feeling the same way that it felt the first time? That kind of follow-up is where you build out that brand loyalty. So that goes into what you're talking about. Why do you build a brand? Because you want to have brand loyalty. You want to have people that uh, will not only buy your product, but they will be your brand champion and tell other people. Now, you can pay for paid advertising. That's great. There's plenty of people that do it. Most of the bit small businesses make their money based on word of mouth referrals. Organic traffic and, or, and referrals are what gives you stability and longevity in your business. Paid advertising will help you get through a moment, but word of mouth and, and actually building out a brand that people feel comfortable talking about is what gives you that longevity that allows you to be able to thrive. And exponential growth. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Jay Abrams mm -hmm. talks about that all the time. And, and I really appreciate you bringing this up because this needs to be talked about. And, and let's dive into that a little bit. But, mm -hmm. you know, what I think so many people, we, we build a business thinking about the first sale. Oh, we made a, a sale. Wonderful. And guys, it is so much more than just that first sale. It is. Hey, now we have a we have a customer, a client. We'll make sure that lifetime value of that and make sure, hey, boom, we optimize. We get them the result. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we come back. They love you, and that what happens? Hey, do you know other individuals that also? Oh my gosh, yeah, you got to talk to them. You got to, and all of a sudden now you have five people that you didn't have to pay for advertising exactly. for that, and that becomes exponential growth. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all know those referrals a lot of easier to close. Why? Because oh, I know Sean. Sean's great. Yeah, he's my neighbor. He's blah blah whatever it may be. And I um, mean, I just appreciate you bringing that up. So let's talk about that mm -hmm. and how you have seen. Like, let, let's just talk about one, like one of your customers. I know you probably uh, can't share all the numbers and stuff, but with with because of you you helping them and mm -hmm. because you're implementing those small intricate things. Hey, just have a nice little quick email that says thank you, blah blah blah, or whatever. Right? How has that helped the bottom line? Because that's what business owners want. Hey, what's the bottom line? Why is this going to make impact? What's the return on investment? Right? Let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I can give you an example. I had uh, a client that what I try to do is I try to build them up and educate them to the point where they don't need me. So then everything after that is a conscious choice. Um, I don't like the fact that there are so many, uh, so many people out there that sell you on something that pretty much makes you beholden to them for the long term. I want it to be a conscious choice because that way, that's where I'm getting those brand champions and that's where I'm getting that loyalty from. Um, every day they make that choice to come back. So um, I would say one of the clients that I had when he started out, um, he, he was doing a painting service, didn't know, um, like he's skilled at what he does, but he didn't have that business side of things. And by doing that follow-up and by laying the foundation of 
this isn't just uh, this isn't just about me getting the business. This is about a relationship. This is your part of the family. Um, we're having those followers. We're letting you know when we're doing events. We're letting you know when we're having different things going on. We're checking in on you. I remember during our conversation, you mentioned this. Okay, how's that going? Um, being able to follow up and showing that you actually care makes other people care. And they feel like it wasn't just about the money. They have a relationship. And that's what makes people talk about you beyond that initial purchase. So for bottom line, it's not just on the revenue um, standpoint, but for him, he was able to match his salary in a quarter. Once he realized he was able to match his salary, this was somebody that wasn't even thinking about going into business for himself. Uh, I got introduced to him through a friend that wanted to create his own painting service. And the other guy was standing. I was like, well, I mean, you're standing here. Like, I'm, I'm assuming that you, you're listening to what I'm saying. And the guy that wanted to do the business failed because he didn't have that level of customer service and follow up. And the one that wasn't really even thinking anything about it, he's not only been able to get his business up to the point where he's thriving and in a quarter, he matched the salary and was able to just quit his job and jump with both feet. But now he's opened up another business. So it's taking that, that knowledge and being able to use it towards other things. It doesn't just help you. It helps your customers. It helps you on your next business venture. It helps you in life. These are life lessons that you can have and, and be able to implement and be able to branch out from there. And that is remarkable. I mean, just to see how that, that exponential growth and that actual bottom line result because of what you, you implemented in that individual's business and life. So, you know, Sean, I, I really just appreciate you just giving so much value and really diving into this stuff that, that needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely at this inter intermediate level, there's a lot of business owners that are at that, you know, six figure, six figure, seven figure kind of mark and like, okay, how do I take it to the next level? And how do I get that brand strategy, brand awareness? And so, Sean, how can they reach out to you? If they if they just want to talk to you, if they need some help, if they need some guidance, what does that look like? Sure. Um, well, uh, my uh, my business is Majority Media. Um, I have a newsletter uh, that I put out for most of the people that are just trying to educate themselves. Either um, one of the things that I realize is there are people that know what they know. There are people that don't know what they don't know. And you want to be able to educate them to the point where if you can ask educated questions, if you can ask more um, important questions, then you can get to more of the answers and ensure that you get the results that you want. So I have a uh, the Entrepreneur's Newsletter, which can be found at majoritymedia.news. And then my website is Majority Media. Um, well, majority.media. Um, and then pretty much anywhere online. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And what I do is I post different articles. I curate articles that um, I want people to be able to get that, that, that perspective of when you read this article, this is something that you can take from it uh, and be able to apply to your business. So um, I'm always trying to put the information out there. It's just a matter of, are you coachable or, or are you in a position to be able to learn the information from there? There you go, man. And guys, that is, uh, I make sure those those links will actually be in the description below. So you can go ahead and click on that and reach out to him and have a conversation. He's on LinkedIn. I'll make sure I, I include all those links. So just click on that, reach out to him, have a conversation as well. Uh, and guys, uh, you know, now, Sean, before we let you go, mm -hmm. is there any last words of wisdom that you want to share with our audience? Uh, you can't teach hunger. That's that's one of the best things that I can tell people is if, if you want it, then you're going to be willing to put in the work. Um, and then the other is, are you coachable? Because there are some, some people that are, they want to be the smartest one in the room so bad that they miss out on the actual lesson. Be smart enough to be the person that's not the smartest in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you need to, you need to find a better room. <laughs> you got to stay humble, man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Sean Atkinson. Thank you so much for tuning Thank in you. to Journey with Christian D. Evans podcast. Until next time.